in 2023, um, I think we would also accept that in politics, for example, but also in all forms of public life, um, again, physical attractiveness plays a role. Uh, I don't know how big a role, but certainly a role, and whether or not people perceive that you can be liked or trusted. It's always been the case. Um, and uh, as Susan's just said, you can go back to Shakespeare. Well, to talk about that issue, um, as a former councillor of uh, the Invercargill City Council, um, and she joins us now to talk about sexism at the Invercargill City Council and whether it's any worse or any better than anywhere else. Uh, Alex Cracker. Good morning to you, Alex. Nice, uh, nice to have you on the show. Good morning. Thank you. Um, you used to be or still are a councillor at Invercargill? Still are. So I've been in local body politics for seven years. Right. So this is you're in your third term. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You got elected with me. I got elected in 2016 too. How old are you, if you don't mind asking? Um, I am just about to turn 33. Right. Okay. So you got elected as a young woman, and you are still certainly for me comparatively young. Um, you've been elected. There. There is this. Uh, contretemps that's just blowing up at your council, but I suggest could blow up in just about any council, Alex, throughout New Zealand. Is there rampant sexism at the uh, Invercargill City Council among elected officials? In its current state, uh, no. Um, the current state of our council is, is, is pretty healthy along the, for the most part, but the, I've definitely experienced that quite rampantly over the past seven years, especially in my first and second terms. Um, one of the things, how was that manifested, though, when you struck that? Was it, Were you belittled for your looks, for your gender, or for both? Uh, it, uh, both, really. It was in part the <coughs> nicknames that I was given. So I used to be called TP. I shortened it to TP, and they would... It was a euphemism for my breasts in that it was twin peaks. Yeah. So, yeah, it was that was, it was probably um, the thing that impacted me the most because you think, you know, is that what I'm good for, objectification? Um, and who made, did, were those comments made to you directly or did you hear them obliquely? Oh, no, definitely directly. Yeah, and they would go, where's TP? And they were elected councillors? Yes. Yeah, that would be a bit discomforting, I would imagine. I imagine, to be fair, that they came from, well, not to be fair, but just still observationally, they came from mostly people my age, did they? Sort of men in their 50s and 60s? Correct. Yes. Right. And so um, that would be part of their generational um, shtick, if you like, rather than something overtly sexist? What do you think? Did they think it was sexist? Um, I don't think that they potentially thought that their own behaviour was wrong, but in today's, today's day and age, 20, 2023, you know, the impact that it has on a young woman's psyche is quite profound. Like you, I had a, a, one of these colleagues that also used to just introduce me to everybody as his lovely assistant. And, you know, we're elected on the same merits, we sit around the same table with the same rights, responsibilities and duties but just introducing me as his, his lovely assistant to, and this is in a professional environment, you know, to the, the business chamber and all sorts of things. It was just, it had a really profound effect. It was, like I just said before, like you, you kind of start thinking, is that all I'm good for, just to, just to be the assistant to somebody, um, you know, higher up than me, I suppose. No, I understand. Um, in, your, in your case, though, um and just, I'm just thinking about that. Did you ever beard these people? Did you ever talk to them directly about how they were addressing you? Yeah, I mean, there'd been multiple conversations of, like, please don't call me that, um, that sort of thing, but nothing was ever really, really done, and you kind of just end up carrying on. Well, it's now gone public in a big way. It's front page lead story in the Otago Daily Times. It has now gone national as well. I have very little doubt that other media, mainstream media, will pick this up over the next 12 to 24 hours. Um, and it all relates, ironically, to another of your currently elected councillors, um, Councillor Skelt, Nigel Skelt. 
Uh, and then it's been moved into another atmosphere by Councillor Rhea Bond, who I think was a New Zealand first. Was she a list MP, um, Alex? Yeah, yeah. She was a list yeah, MP. Well, saying that if yeah. Councillor Skelt comes back onto the council, I resign. So that's sort of that's sort of throwing the hand grenade into the into the cafe at that stage. 